this is uh, my horse. It's based on the Irish Draft workhorse. Um, the Irish Draft workhorse was a horse that was capable both of working the land, but at the same time, it was capable that you could throw a saddle on it, use it to hack or connect a cart to it. Um, so it's a very universal horse. I have dedicated this to a man called Paddy Dorley, who was a customer of mine in my shop. Paddy was one of those men that I just took to. There was something about him. I just really liked him. I liked the fact that he worked with horses. He was very king on playing with horses. And he'd done loads of videos. And he always talked about his horse Monica that he had. So I basically have dedicated this to Paddy. And in my head, the idea was that I would be able to bring Paddy down here to see it, and I haven't seen this man 15 years, but unfortunately Paddy passed away on uh, was Lady Rest on Christmas Eve, so he never got the chance to see this. So it's a steel frame structure, then interwoven with branches. I've incorporated two uh, birds' nests into it with eggs. We have three bird feeders in it. Uh, there's a few unusual items like uh, Easy Start, uh, We Kids Tractor, uh, Little Shovel. We've got two St. Bridges Crosses in it. This whole area was badly affected with the flood back in 2017. And if you had it took time to walk around this area, you would have found all sorts of unusual things washed up into the hedgerows. Hence the Little Kids Tractor, the Little Shovel, etc. You can imagine stuff like that were washed up into the hedgerows uh, after that flood. Um, the plow I required there not that long ago was an old furrow plow. Um, different people gave me different pieces which I managed to put together and use. Uh, the main and tail are made from old hessian rope that a friend of mine gave me one day just landed over there. So there's a heap of rope and I, I just made use of it and created the, the, the mane and tail from it. And it's there if anybody wants to stand behind it and see the horse walk on, get your photograph taken. Hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is my piece, Brown, and um, means womb and it's uh, basically an invitation for you to come and have a take some time out of our your busy life and uh, be held within nature when I got the brief for the project it was to create a sensory installation and um, the first thought that I had was uh, something that would allow you to see and experience everything that's happening around you and also hear because it's a lot of sounds in the park or the river and birds and just people passing by too. Um, so the piece really um, is interactive. It's, uh, it's designed for you to go and have a lie down or a sit down with your friends or alone and just reflect on uh, spring coming. And there's a canvas overhead as well, a seal. And um, over the course of the month, um, what you see will change. So it'll evolve as the trees come into bloom. Um, there'll be more leaf coverage and the silhouettes will change. And it's also always moving with the wind and things like that. So that's it. <laughs> this is called Sula, working off Lake of Shadows and Lake of the Eyes. The glass roundels that I've actually used are actually face cream jars that I managed to melt down in a kiln and I purposely chose the different colours to bounce off the sun at different times of the evening. The green glass was chosen for its texture and the white and different colours going through it. Again, this piece should look different at different times of the evening. Everything on this piece has been repurposed, found, left lying about and I have reused it. The actual piece of driftwood I found on a beach probably about five years ago and I've dried it out and treated it and I've I left it sitting for a particular piece that I always had in my mind and I was lucky enough this year that this fitted it. Uh, the rest is made out of uh, just a box construction and springs. It's basically stuff 
that was left lying around that I have recycled and repurposed. Um, that's even that's is made from scrap steel. Uh, I went through a period where I was stealing uh, metal out of metal fabricators skips which gave me a lot of material but the idea about the lesser spotted tree dragon is it's a kind of a nerdy name and it uh, refers to uh, 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 a species that is under threat or it's the lesser uh, uh, it, it, it's a rare thing and in this case she is the second last, and if she doesn't get uh, find another lesser spotted tree dragon, she will join Lonesome George, the, the giant turtle, and all sorts of animals like that, and become extinct. In Irish, in mythology, from bear wolf through to um, uh, the the uh, the most mo more modern uh, Game of Thrones, the dragon is always seen as a a protector of something precious. So I reckon that it's, there's a kind of a double meaning in this. It's that the dragon is there to protect nature, but uh, is under threat herself. Uh, and that kind of, to me, says what the world is about. And I think in this wonderful park here, it's great to be able to reflect on how we, what we have around us and how very rare it is. So I hope you enjoy it. Mythology, the raven is uh, they're, the, they're the creatures that live in both worlds so they're like a portal into the other world and I wanted to make a piece where the bird of the air meets the human heart so it's not a it's not a scary piece it's meant to be quite tender where you have the two ravens that have kind of landed on a human body and repossess the head and the human element is the hand on the heart and it's made from a material called jesmonite which is like plaster paris if you break your arm and you get it in plaster paris it's a very similar material and there's a metal up in between it so that was the idea behind the piece so it's um birds of the air meeting the human heart so there you go My artistic activities are my own search for images and questions that cannot be expressed in any other way. I usually start my work with an impulse or a question that I can't answer verbally. Using augmented reality allows us to experience images that do not exist and yet we can see and feel them in the space around us. This is a very interesting experience, a bit of a shamanic ritual like chasing away winter and welcoming spring. I don't think of art as something permanent. On the one hand, I see it as an optimization. On the other hand, it is constant change and searching. In a way, art making can be compared to the breath or the change of seasons. The nature of breath is its duration. It is alive with the going in and out of air. Without this action, it is nothing. That's how I describe the concept of art. Crocheting is a very therapeutic and a very contemplative pastime, a very contemplative art piece of um, art 
activity. So as I was crocheting, I get lots and lots of thoughts, which I will not all share with you. You will be glad to know. Um, when I was thinking about spring and the 1st of February, St. Bridget, and um, this is all about, um, while we're standing here, we can't even think about the spring and the daffodils and the sun and the lovely leaves, but we know it's coming. We know it's coming and it's that expectation, that circular coming and going of the seasons. And um, spring, it's the new life, the renewal and St. Bridget in the history of um, traditions. People used to prepare their houses and get a good spring clean done and then leave something out for St. Bridget if she was passing for her to bless it. So that, that's people were still posting things like that yesterday. So I went around Swans Park looking for a place for my artwork and I found this very, very dark, very dirty little place in here. <laughs> and I thought there's a little cooker in it. And I thought this is very domestic. This is really somewhere where I can feel this is where I want it. And even the gardener said to me, George, he said, you could have picked a nicer place. But this is the place I wanted to be in. So I was in there and it was dark and it was raining and it was windy. It was full of leaves and dirt and wet and rubbish. And I thought, stage one will be to clean it, spring clean it, freshen it up, open it up, bring new life into it. And then I started making uh, well over 120 of these little circles. They are made of bracelets, most of them from charity shops, but I bought some as well. Every single bead comes from the charity shops and they are recycled and it really gives me a real sense of that these things have been worn or were given or unwanted gifts to uh, members of the community so and the idea is really that um, the light you know the, I was here yesterday and the right light light reflected of the of the glass beads and it was all shimmering and it is the sense of welcome we're welcoming the spring we're welcoming new life and also the welcoming the blessing and we all need blessings don't we so my starting point in this work well the darkness between light the winter and summer so the light summer seems to move very quickly. Winter seems to drag for time and time and time and the circular motion is activated by this handle here. So as you turn, it just asks you to give a moment in time. And then the discs. Ball. And it's really just that here of just like having the time to give to both sides of the, the seasons, the, the light side, the dark side, both are as important as the other and without one we can't have the other. And we're all looking forward to this idea of like British states like and spring and the idea of everything coming up, but also winter has its benefits as well and we need the winter as well as the summer. So that's the typical nature of the piece, I suppose. Nice. Yeah. Thank you.